Hello, I'm Victor. I'm the tech director at Red Butter. Um, as Jimmy mentioned, we're partnering with Split because we both believe in continuous delivery um, and in that being the right way of um, delivering software and digital products. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, I'm mainly going first to make sure that you enjoy the other talks. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to do that by tackling a really exciting topic, compliance. Hey. Uh, yeah. Uh, I've lost you already, right? <laughs> so the other talks cannot be about something less cool than this. So you're guaranteed to enjoy them, right? But really, I'm, I'm, I want to talk about continuous delivery and um, compliance and the moment they clash. Um, and so to begin with that, I want to look at continuous delivery and why we do that in the first place. Um, starting with the fact that software quality at scale is hard. And when I say scale, I don't mean like particularly large scale, just like some scale, even medium. Um, software gets complicated, testing gets complicated, deployment gets complicated. And so like from experience, we all know that shipping software breaks things. Um, I'm gonna, gonna say shipping, and by that I mean deploying, releasing, generally making changes, just because it's a short word. So in other words, shipping equals risk, right? And so it stands to reason that more shipping equals more risk, it's just maths. Um, and businesses, especially regulated ones, don't like risk though, so how do we take less risk? I guess test more, ship less? Maybe. Um, no, that doesn't seem right. Uh, there are a few problems with that, right? Like testing is far from perfect. Um, it, you can do as much testing as you like, and you're not going to get it 100% right. Plus, software only really works when it's in production and works for customers. Um, and then finally, lead times matter. So if you spend a month testing, that's a month that you've not delivered value to the customer. And businesses like making changes quickly because forward planning is also hard. Um, so. Let's think about risk again. Like, what can we um, figure out about where risk comes from? So when, when shipping software, I think there are two sources of risk. Like either you ship the wrong thing um, and you've broken some feature. So that's one problem. The other problem is you break the deployment itself. So you ship the perfect right feature, but the deployment breaks and breaks the product and everything's broken. So let's have a think about what we do about those two. Like shipping the wrong thing, maybe ship Fewer things, or at least fewer things at once. Fewer things, fewer things to break. Hopefully, more chance getting it right. And shipping the thing wrong, where well, you can exercise the deployment a bit more, because if you repeat it, then you get it right more often. You get better at it. And we can do one better. We can automate it. Right? We can automate the deployment. And this is where these practices start kicking in. Um, continuous integration, that's automate integration, automate testing. So the promise there is it's working software always. But recall that I just said software only really works when it's production and in front of customers. And that's where continuous delivery comes in, where we automate also deployment, scaling, operations, rollback, everything else that comes into it. So the promise is working software always in production. Um, and all that automation is code. And there's a principle um, I really like um, that we keep talking about a lot, um, which is everything as code. Um, and that has a lot of positive side effects. So as code, I mean the, the automation code, right? It's source code like the product code. The so product is code, testing is code, deployment is code, um, scaling is code, all the configuration of the infrastructure is code, all of that. Um, automation is great because it minimizes human error. Um, more actual work gets done because computers are doing the deploying and humans are doing the product work. And then Interesting one that is useful for what I'm talking about is that source control is then a source of truth and also audit trail. Um, and so the consequences of automating anything then is that shipping almost always works. Like it does go wrong, but when it does go wrong, we can fix things quite quickly because we do it all the time. And we can genuinely ship code like all the time, five times a day, 10 times a day, even more. So what does that do to the risks that we were talking about? Risk of shipping the wrong thing. Well, we are shipping a, few of, a lot fewer things at once. So if I just shipped something and it broke, um, I know what it was. Um, I can look at why it broke, figure out quite quickly. If I ship six months worth of changes and something breaks, it's going to take a while to figure out um, what, what was wrong in that deployment. So we've improved things with that. right? And then we've automated the deployment. So there's less chance of shipping the thing wrong. 
So then shipping is risk and more shipping is less risk, which is what we wanted, right? But, uh, <laughs> but you already knew that, right? At least um, intuitively, if you've done any software delivery, you probably have the intuition that that works. Um, so, so here is the promise of continuous delivery in full, right? Working software always in production with less risk. Great, problem solved. John, job done. Let's go to the pub. Except there's um, there's one more thing. Who knows who that guy is? Just like <laughs> hand, hands up. Oh, it's more than I, I I was thinking. Maybe Steve Jobs, but then I came came up with this guy. Um, if you don't know who he is, ask the people who do know. It's a great TV show from eighties, I think. The eighties. Um, so yeah, there is just one more problem, and that's compliance. I clearly have to do the transition again because it's just fantastic. So if you're in a safety-focused or regulated industry, uh, you'll almost certainly have a compliance department or a compliance officer. And when you say, we're doing continuous delivery, we're shipping five times a day, they'll say, whoa, 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 you can't do that. Um, and you'll most likely get asked to fill out like a form and convince them that what you're doing is right, tick a lot of boxes, um, make sure that you follow the policies, and then they will manually check it. And it, the turnaround will be probably like two weeks, because there's two of them for 15 delivery teams. Um, and they're doing everything largely manually, and you get that, and you feel like, hmm, what am I gonna do? You just start losing the will to live. But I think we can probably do better, so let's have a think about compliance. And firstly, what is the point of it? And the point is reduce risk, but hang on, we, we know something about risk. We just thought more shipping is less risk. Compliance is less shipping, so compliance is more risk. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that can't be right, right? And people know this, and, and they deal with it in different ways. Like they treat it as a box ticking exercise, they just say what compliance want to hear, um, or they try and subvert the process somehow, go around it, or just hide somewhere. Um, they get an exception from leadership, um, and all that kind of works until it doesn't, until something actually goes wrong, and then, then there's a problem. Um, so I would not advise any of that, um, because it means that compliance becomes even more of a security theater than it already is, um, and no one wins. Um, so there has to be a better way. Um, and I went on the internet and asked, what is compliance? And Martin Fowler has a great answer. Um, he says, it's a set of policies which set limits on properties of the system, and then processes that check that those properties are in that limits um, and require some evidence to prove it. Um, so what if we apply the same trick and automate that? And that's the thing that some people call continuous compliance. So automate compliance, right? make, make all of these things automatic, automate evidence collection, automate the submission, automate the verification maybe, if you can convince the compliance department. Um, and I think the way to think about this, because all of this becomes part of the pipeline that you use to ship your software, um, that the compliance evidence is actually part of your product. Right? If you're in a regulated industry, then being compliant is a feature um, for a good reason. And I, like, I know that it may not be possible to get an agreement uh, to go all the way to production with continuous compliance on day one. Um, so maybe like, go at least some of the way, um, practice continuous delivery as far as you can, um, and then push to go for further, like figure out more automation, better evidence, agree better metrics, talk to the compliance officers, talk to other people in your organization that are facing the same problem. Maybe we need like a movement. No, no, okay, no. <laughs> Let's not do that. Um, what I can make happen, unlike dev, set, comply, whatever I called it, um, is give you some examples from, from practice where we've kind of done something like this or seen something like this. Um, and then maybe we can go from there. So first one is, a, is a inter, in, an international bank, quite a big one. Um, I think like many banks, they have a principle they call segregation of duties, which in their interpretation is that there is two different people. One makes the change to the code, the other deploys it. Um, and that is meant to prevent a rogue employee doing both. But like in that interpretation, A, it probably doesn't because the person deploying something doesn't really know what they're deploying. So it's a box ticking exercise back to security theater. Um, and also it's not the point that two different people do two different things. It's just that two people are involved. Um, so when we were in, a, in this bank for about three years doing continuous delivery, we eventually agreed um, with the compliance um, and release management people that the requirement can be fulfilled by evidence of approval from a separate person on a code change. So code review, right? 
um, in GitHub. And then if we demonstrate a guarantee that the code can't then be tampered with from the moment it's committed all the way through to production, so through the CI pipeline, through the CD pipeline, they will be happy. And they let us, and then we did continuous delivery maybe like three, four times a day on those banking journeys. So that was one small success. There was many different ones. Um, but the other one, which I think is quite interesting, was a client. This was a more consulting sort of technical audit engagement. They are a healthcare products company. Uh, they're regulated by FDA, and they need an approval, I think, every two years to stay compliant. It is a big, big document explaining everything they do, how they do it, what practices they follow, how they do testing, all of that stuff. Um, but it's just text, it's promises, it's words, right? It, it's unlikely to be entirely accurate because things change and it takes a long time to produce. Um, and it's impossible to verify, essentially. So instead, um, we think they could start by producing that documenta documentation automatically, at least partially, right? build up to it. And this is like an interesting point where the compliance people will probably be happier as well because you automate some of their job, um, the boring part of their job. Imagine what they enjoy is figuring out the ways to set up the policies to make sure that nothing goes wrong, not checking the box ticking. Um, and once they've automated that, um, that gets them a bit faster, but maybe they can then start talking to the regulator about automatically accepting it as well and maybe come up with some protocol that is a machine readable file. Um, so as I said, this was a technology audit, so we recommended that approach. And I think um, last time we spoke to them, they are sort of moving in that direction. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but those are some examples. Um, so if you do have compliance to deal with as part of your work, um, here are some takeaways that I think you should um, take home with you. Continuous delivery is less risk. This is an important one, I think, because it's not intuitive immediately, especially to compliance people. Um, compliance evidence is part of your product. And finally, make friends with compliance. Don't treat them as an enemy. Don't think about them as an adversary. Um, you have a common goal, right? You have a goal of working software 100% of the time, but changes made safely on demand. And if you help automate some of their jobs, they'll love you. But, but maybe don't jump on them. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's it. Thank you.